You might have heard people talk about this concept called non-blocking I.O. and how Node uses it to run super fast. But what is non-blocking I.O. and why does it help? That's the question I'll be answering today. Along the way, we'll explore how servers handle requests and the differences between CPU-based workloads and I.O.-based workloads. If note of what I just said made sense, then this video is for you. So buckle up and let's go! By the way, I'm going to assume you have just a little bit of software engineering knowledge. Just a little bit. First, before getting to Node, let's talk about servers and threads just as an overview. A server is a thing that receives requests, does some work to compute a response, and sends it back. Oftentimes, there are HTTP servers that serve websites and HTTP APIs, but other protocols are also possible. For example, when you visit google.com, you send an HTTP request to a Google server, which computes the HTML response that you should see and sends it back to you. Then your browser displays the HTML on your screen as a website. Inside a server, one or more threads divide up the work in between them. A thread can be thought of as a single worker that does work. A single threaded server has one worker handling requests, while a multi-threaded server might have multiple ones handling requests at the same time. We can explore this using a restaurant as an analogy. Here is an infrequently visited restaurant with just one waiter. Because it's not super popular, parties tend to come in one by one. The waiter serves each party before moving on to the next one. If we captured this in an animation, here's what that might look like. Time goes from left to right, and each row represents a party. As the waiter finishes up one party, they either wait for more customers or move on to the next one. This analogy actually works really well to describe servers. The restaurant we just talked about is just like a server that infrequently receives requests and has one thread. The one waiter is like the one thread, and the requests are like the parties that come in. Let's imagine now that two parties enter the restaurant at about the same time. You might think that one waiter can only serve one party at a time, but that's actually not the case. While a party is looking at the menu, or eating, or waiting for their food, they generally don't need help, so the waiter can ping-pong between tables and help both at the same time. Here's what that might look like. I've now broken up each table into parts when they need help in dark blue and parts when they don't need help in light blue. So first, one party comes in, so we help them, and then the other party comes in, so we switch to helping that party, and we ping pong between them as each needs help. But what about now, when both parties need help at the same time? The waiter can only help one of them, so the other one has to wait a little longer than if they were the only party. The time spent waiting is highlighted in red. The key insight here is that one waiter can serve multiple tables at the same time because each table has some downtime. In real life, you've probably noticed that restaurants you visited might only have one waiter for every three tables, or even one for every six to eight depending on how casual the restaurant is. All of what we've been talking about actually applies to servers and Node.js too. Just like a table only needs help part of the time, Request processing also has a part that requires active attention and a part that does not. A part that requires active attention is called CPU work because it requires the central processing unit of the computer to actively spend time thinking and computing results. CPU work requires a thread to handle it, just like a table that needs help requires a waiter to handle it. The part that doesn't require active attention is called I.O., which stands for Input Output because it involves waiting for something else to provide input or to send output. Examples of I.O. include waiting to read a file from the file system, waiting while making a network request to another server, or even just waiting for time to pass. In the restaurant example, we relate things like looking at the menu to I.O. because the waiter is waiting for something else to finish. In short, CPU is active computing or thinking, I.O. is waiting for something else to happen. To make things more concrete, let's look at a pseudocode example for a server that receives a request, computes some prime numbers, posts them on Twitter, and sends a link to the tweet back to the caller. All the work the server has to do is expressed in this function, handle request. First, we compute the primality of some numbers in this section. Next, we choose a random prime and build our tweet. These parts are both CPU work. Then, we post the tweet on Twitter, which is IO work. 
Specifically, the I.O. work is between when the server has sent the request to Twitter and when Twitter responds. Here's the exciting part. Just like a waiter can save time by switching tables whenever a table doesn't need help, non-blocking I.O. allows a thread to save time by switching requests whenever a request is doing I.O. This greatly increases the amount of effective work that a single thread can do. The non-blocking part means that while a request is doing I.O., the thread is not stuck or blocked waiting for the request to finish. Blocking I.O., on the other hand, means that the thread is stuck or blocked waiting for the I.O. to finish before it can keep going. Here is what the timing diagram might look like if we were doing blocking I.O. There's a lot more red, which means a lot more waiting and unnecessary latency. In the restaurant analogy, that would be like if the waiter says, Hi! I'll be your waiter for tonight, pulls up a chair and sits there while you read the menu, wait for your food, eat your food, and only leaves when you do. Not only is that super weird, it's also a huge waste of time for the waiter. You might be wondering, why isn't non-blocking I.O. the standard? It just seems obviously better or more efficient. Well, when web backend development first became popular in languages like Perl, PHP, and later others like Ruby, Python, etc., the language model didn't easily allow for non-blocking I.O. It's possible in some of these as well as in others like Rust, Go, Java, and Scala, but depending on the language, it can sometimes be inconvenient or off the beaten path. As an alternative, folks use servers with blocking I.O. and lots and lots of threads to handle high traffic. Node.js was written because the creator wanted to make non-blocking I.O. easier to adopt and JavaScript was a great fit because of its emphasis on callbacks. Let's wrap up by talking about some of the downsides of non-blocking I.O. The foremost one is that it's only effective for I.O. heavy workloads. In workloads that have more I.O. work than CPU work, the efficiency gain from non-blocking I.O. is much higher as you might expect. On the other side of the spectrum, if a workload is predominantly CPU, then the non-blocking I.O. won't help very much. This is especially important when working with Node.js servers because they only have one thread and thus will get bogged down quickly if subject to CPU heavy workloads, like this one. It's akin to a restaurant with just one waiter. If someone calls the waiter over for five minutes to talk to them about something, that's five minutes guaranteed that everybody else has to wait if they need help. That's why Node excels for applications like sending lots of network requests, but isn't as strong for other applications like machine learning, which involve a lot of CPU heavy number crunching. I hope this is all helpful. Let's recap. First, the work of fulfilling a request can be divided into CPU work and I.O. work. Second, servers handle requests using threads, which each independently handle requests. Third, non-blocking I.O. allows the thread to put down a request while it's performing I.O. to work on a different request's CPU component. Fourth, non-blocking I.O. allows Node.js to efficiently handle I.O. heavy workloads despite having only one thread. As always, thanks for watching and please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also do me a huge favor by sharing this video with anyone who could benefit from it. See ya!